Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is a video of getting started with the Toshiba G810. I'm going to turn it on for the first time now. I've just installed the battery, and it looks like the power button is off to the side here. So I'm going to hold it in, and... Okay, there we go. I haven't put my SIM card in just yet, so it'll tell me that I won't have any signal. Windows Mobile 6.1. Very nice. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And of course, tap the screen to set up your device. Let's find the stylus. The stylus. Um, where could the stylus be? Uh, hmm. Is it up here? I, is this it? I cannot find the stylus. Okay, I found the stylus. What you have to do is actually slide your finger along the side. Look at this thing. Let me try to get it in focus here. This is the stylus. It's very unconventional. I'm not sure if I like it. Anywho, let's get, let's get started with this. Okay, I'm going to skip that, of course. Change the time later. says the SIM card is missing. I know that. Wow, look at these buttons glow blue. Very interesting. Okay, so no evidence. Okay, here's something. Select an application to install. Toshiba Virtual Keyboard, and it gives you a description. Toshiba Virtual Keyboard is a unique text input tool. It covers the entire screen. It has enough large, uh, it has enough keys large enough to be tapped with the fingertips. I'm just going to put all of these in. See what happens. I'm click Next. This can use up memory. Okay, that's fine. Okay guys, so after about two minutes, I have something to show. Here we have SPB Mobile Shell, it looks like, which is a program that SPB sells for, I think, 25 or $30, and it gets very high reviews because what it allows you to do is uh, access all of your information from a non-Windows Mobile-looking interface here, which is pretty nice. So here we have a clock in the center, and if I click on the clock, I get, well, the time and times in other cities, should I choose that. If I click the back button, I can go to weather, and then we're back into the kind of standard Windows Mobile look, and I can choose a city, but I'm going to do cancel because I don't have a data connection just this second. Um, we have links to messaging here, so if I click on that, it'll bring me to the standard text messaging application, and of course, this is Windows Mobile 6.1, so we have threaded text uh, messages, which is really great. Um, I'm assuming clicking on this brings us to missed calls, and of course, I just turned on this phone, so there are no missed calls. This is a profile switcher. Windows Mobile Professional still doesn't have profiles, but they added a way to switch between silent, vibrate, and normal in Mobile Shell. Now on the bottom, this lets you toggle through the various views that you'll see on the screen. So the first view is lit up, it's the calendar. And if I click on the 9th of July, well actually we're in January right now, it'll bring open the Windows Mobile calendar. If we go to the bottom to the second one, we get an application launcher. And the internet is standard. Wow, that was interesting. I like that animation. Wow. Wow, did you see that? It's kind of got some uh, cube. It's like a cube that rolls forward. I like that. Um, so we can go to Internet Explorer. And like I said, I don't have a data connection, so I'm going to get out of that. And notice how each time I exit a program, I am taken back to this SPB mobile shell display. Not sure if I like that. I have to get used to where everything is placed in this screen before I can use it all the time. Um, what else is up here? We have this one, which takes us to screen brightness, is that? Yeah, it's screen brightness. So I can make it real dim or real bright. It's quite convenient. Um, this looks like Wi-Fi connectivity. This will rotate the device landscape. I'll keep it in that for now. And back, so let's go back to landscape. We have a lock button, which I'm assuming is the device lock. And, well, that's annoying. I don't want to lock my device. And if you notice, when I turned it to landscape, it actually reoriented the, the buttons on the, on, that were on the bottom. Now they're on the right. So let's continue up to this icon for phone. This allows you to dial favorite people. And I'm assuming it'll allow you to associate a picture with each person's name. And finally, this X actually gets you out of SPB Mobile Shell and into the standard Today screen. Okay, now quickly I want to take a look if there's any programs in the Start menu that aren't typically installed on a Windows Mobile device. So we have Auto Config here. This is probably... 
yeah, you can set it up based on your carrier in the U.S. So I'm going to choose AT&T Wireless because that's who my carrier is. And it'll set up all the connections with GPRS and whatnot to make sure your device works. I don't want to do it now. I'll click Cancel. Okay. AGPS, this has assisted GPS to get a quicker fix, which is good. Auto install, not sure what that is. Not going to tap on that. Blacklist. Looks like you can block people from calling you. Okay. Um, FM radio. Please connect a headset. Of course, uh, this device uses the headset that you connect with earphones as the antenna to get a signal. Um, we have full screen keyboard here by SPB. That's another enhancement. And you're supposed to be able to use your thumbs to type on this. I've never actually used this. Let me try. The, the quick... Uh, that didn't really work very well. Okay, so I need some practice on that. How do I get out of here? Do do. Okay, that, that did it. Good. We have Getting Started, which is the Windows Mobile 6.1 um, kind of cheat sheet on how to set up various aspects of your phone, such as making a call, and the flick scrolling doesn't seem to work in there. That's strange. Let me go back. Yeah, it doesn't. That's odd. Okay, we have Image to Text, which is a neat application that lets you take a picture of a business card and store it as text. It actually uses OCR to do that. Pretty cool. We have Image Editor. That's new. Okay, I'm going to click on an image. I'm assuming it will allow me to paint on this. Um, let's see. Draw. Here it is. And I choose a color, red, and it's not drawing. I need to look into that some more and figure that out. So that is the Image Editor. Internet sharing built in, of course. Task Manager, that's in Windows Mobile 6.1. It shows you the memory usage of all the programs open and how much of the CPU you're, they are using. Streaming Player, wonder what that is. It's probably a streaming internet player. I must say that the performance of this device is pretty good. Let me open up the settings menu for the first time. It's pretty fast. It's almost as fast as the iMate 9502, which doesn't surprise me because it uses the same processor. Um, let's see how we're doing in terms of memory. Um, get, get a little closer there. So program memory, we're using about half of what we have available. And that makes sense. We have a lot of programs open. I think this integration of SPB software on a new device from Toshiba is quite interesting. And I'm going to have a lot more to say about this device. I also want to play with these buttons down here to see exactly... Um, how they operate. They are indeed touch sensitive, by the way. So more on this soon.